are you doing today, sir? Good, thank you. Good, very um, good. So let me start by saying I absolutely fucking loved your movie. <laughs> just tremendously loved. Loved. Uh, thank so you. Let's that's, just, that's a big deal to me. That's great. Let's that's just good. start with that. Yeah, um, okay. Uh, what has this process been like for you? Because you've spent years bringing this to the screen. Was there ever a point during this production process that you were like, this, I, I don't know if it's ever, we're ever going to hit the finish line? Yeah, I, I, that happened many times. I mean, it, the planets never quite aligned to kick, kick, kick it off. And when we did finally kick it off, we were going to shoot it in the center of Australia, Broken Hill, where we shot the other movies. And then it hadn't rained for 15 years, and then it just a deluge came, and what was flat red wasteland became a flower garden, and it was extraordinary what waits underneath the, the, the sand. And, um, and then the, the great salt lakes in the center of Australia had pelicans and frogs in them and so on. So we waited, Warners were great. They said, okay, let's wait. It, the locals say it would dry out, and it didn't dry out enough. So we had to move from the east coast of Australia to the west coast of Africa to Namibia and started shooting there. And, you know, it was a, it was a, a tough shoot. I mean, we had to do it. We, you know, there's no other way to do this movie. It's not a green screen movie. We had to do it old school, practical effects, real vehicles, real people, real desert. And every day for 130 days, every day a big stunt day. Because this is a, a story, as you, as you we saw it's told on the run, so everything's moving, and uh, and and um, so it was difficult. The degree of difficulty was high, but we had a really really great crew and a, a very very uh, talented cast. I mean, Tom Hardy played rugby, so he's he's very physically adept, and Charlize was a very accomplished ballet dancer. So all that precision and skill that you need, the spatial awareness. They were able to use. I think, she, I think for a long time she was looking for a film like this where she could express that side of herself. Because I don't say much. No, yeah, com yeah. Com completely. Uh, a lot of. Did that answer your question? One hundred percent. I put on Twitter that I was going to be talking to you, and a lot of people. I think I know the answer, but a lot of people want to hear you say it. Were there any deleted scenes in the film, or not at all? There were about five deleted scenes but the, there weren't extended scenes they weren't like a whole sequence they were they were small sequences we shot 480 hours of footage that's three weeks continuous viewing without sleep but uh it wasn't like there were whole other bits of the story to tell it's that we had cameras everywhere they were digital cameras they were quite small and each of them could run for 40 minutes. So you'd start the cameras and you'd, you'd do takes. If there was a big explosion, it might only last for 15 seconds, but you'd have 40 minutes of footage. So it's a massive amount of footage. And every vehicle had a camera somewhere uh, in, in those great armadas going across. So it was a lot, a, a, a lot of footage. The actual scenes we lost, they weren't very... It, the, the scenes were too hard to, to, to come by too hard to execute to actually shoot something that you were you know, maybe iffy about using but for pace we lost a few things here and there but, but surprisingly little but then we, we I was looking at it for the for the DVD uh, release the other day and uh, there's a few things a little bit of backstory in there but just a little bit of explanation of things uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Do you foresee, will there be a quote-unquote extended cut on the Blu-ray, or these scenes might just be deleted scenes? They'll be just deleted scenes. There's no, uh, there's nothing I lost that I would want to necessarily put in. I regret missing the scenes themselves, but in the overall piece, it's much more of, of, of the, of the, the, sorry, how to, how to say this, the, the the rhythms, the cadences of the piece, uh, I'm really happy with. Uh, I didn't feel that if I put the other scenes in, it would extend it out a little bit. But th this thing, this thing, once you start a certain rhythm, once you start a certain tempo, it's like a bit of music. You can't fall off it. And if you do, then you better make sure that you, the, the, there are clear uh, moments of quiet. Sure. Just to let everybody take their breath. So if I put those other scenes in, you'd lose those rhythms. Uh, I believe you did a test screening about a year ago in 
Burbank or one of the pl places. I'm curious from that test screening to what's being released, how much changed in that editing process or was it pretty much what it is this entire time? Um, the, it would have been about a year ago. That was pretty close. That was pretty much a, a, an assembly of the movie. I think that movie, uh, that, that version ran about two hours 20, I guess. And this movie is, that was without credits. Sure. And, can you feel? Yeah, it feels like there's an earthquake. It, it, was, it was an assembly. I mean, we, it hadn't been uh, fi f uh, refined, cut, and I think there were some missing scenes. Um, the Warner Brothers just, just wanted to see where we were going with, with, with it, and uh, I felt it was a bit too early. But we, it was the, I love uh, test screenings. I'm, I'm lucky enough to have had Final Cut from the very get-go when I started 30 years ago. And once you've got Final Cut as a filmmaker, then you, you, then you, you have no trepidation about these test screenings. They're very, very useful. And also it was very important to get clarity and, and, and so on. And there was stuff we were trying that we didn't have at that point. But it was a very, very, um, you know, a, a very, very half-baked version of the movie. Uh, Are you yeah. worrying about this? Not thinking about yeah. it. Yeah. Like, but you think, yeah, 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 it, 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 this is not an earthquake because no, it's it, like a, it's some feels like some. There must be a truck below us or something. Or something. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is the the the, the uh, not the way I expected the interview to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I want to jump uh, off Mad Max for a second and discuss actually, uh, which uh, maybe I don't know how much you've, you've spoken about it in the past. You were originally going to do Contact. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of those projects where did you ever see the finished version? No, you never no, did. No, you? no, I, I, um, uh, not any disrespect to Bob Zemeckis, but I uh, look. One of the great years of my life, one of the peak moments, was to spend a year with Carl Sagan uh, because he, he and Annie Duran wrote that screenplay, and it was you know. A, it was just absolutely wonderful to 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 meet those scientists and, and, and to, to talk about the movie. But as time went on, it was clear that Warners weren't prepared to do the movie uh, uh, that that uh, that I was I was interested in making. It, it was going to be safer, so we agreed to part ways. And uh, and then when I then somebody sent me the screenplay they were going to make and it, it basically regressed into, into a much safer, more predictable thing. And so that wasn't to be. I, I have to ask you because that's a, I really did enjoy Zemeckis' version, but I am of course, as a fan of your work, so curious what you were thinking about doing with the material. Can you sort of tease what you were thinking about or is it so long ago well, that it, it's... It was a long, long bit. It was... Um, I'm not saying it was going to be 2001, but it was much, it was much, much less so, sort of force feeding exposition, where where the most of the dramatic things in in, in the script that that they eventually made was people talking about stuff that they should be experiencing, you know, which you see sure. too too much in movies. I don't think they trusted the audiences enough. So, have you seen Interstellar? Yes, and, and Linda Ropes was the same producer and she's incredibly incredibly bright person steeped in all this material sure Interstellar is much closer than 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 Contact not that I've seen Contact but I did read that screenplay um, I, I have to say but I, I'm very curious what that would have been uh, I'm also curious how close obviously there's the, and I don't want to talk about Justice League yeah. but there's been so many things that you've like Contact Justice League that you've come close to doing are there a, a lot of other projects that you've come close to doing or what what has it been like for you like the last decade or two in terms of trying to germinate seeds you know or have most of the things you've worked on been managing to be brought to life most of the things I've worked on I'm one of those directors um, who prefers to write new material because that's when you can dig down deep um, the only films uh, even those that I've produced that, that, that the only films I've directed, there was The Twilight Zone, which was uh, an existing uh, screenplay, which is a V-Swick. When I read that screenplay, bang, it was right there. It was a great, great screenplay. Um, and then there was Contact, which 
which wherever I was going to take it wasn't where the studio at the time initially they were very keen but they began to get cold feet um, Justice League again another great screenplay uh, and uh, that fell out for no nothing to do with the studio or anybody it was it was new tax legislation in Australia mm -hmm. and some board just threw it out because it wasn't Australian enough in the middle of a write, writer's guild and and that board was thrown out and it, yep. it was the, the it was the first film put up to the board and they had no idea they they didn't even know about how the film industry works and uh, anyway that was that happened there and everything else is is something that, that I've written so I don't have like lots and lots of other outside screenplays uh, you know hoping to get them out they're all all stuff that I've been working on I don't know that's how I started uh, and you know that that's what I've kept kept on doing. Sure. Have you? Are there a lot of scripts that you've worked on or tinkered with, or there are first drafts sitting in a desk somewhere that have been unproduced? Yeah. Or yeah. I don't, not not a huge number, but there's certainly things. Uh, and it's, it's how I, it's how I decide on the next film, the one that's most insistent. Uh, yeah. So it, it it you know ever since I was a kid, I lived the imaginative life. I'm hardwired now for it. And uh, it's what I do. It's all I do, and 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 so there's stories there, and those that keep invading your dreams, and those that keep invading your daydreams, and so on, are the ones that you usually end up making. I did not intend to make a second Mad Max, let let alone a fourth one, but uh, you know I felt I didn't get the. F I was learning so much on the first one. It was an opportunity to do the second one and and and, and put much more that I learnt in. And, and this one came, and I just kept on pushing it away. The idea grew and grew and grew, and, and that's how it works. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm led to film through my curiosity more than anything else. I'm both curious about story and how to tell a story, and also the technology, you know. Well, I'm going to say as, as a fan of your work and of this particular movie, I'm so happy that you... Uh, um, uh, made Fury Road because it's fucking great. Yeah. Um, my last uh, question for you, because then I got to wrap. Uh, uh, DC, Warner Brothers are planning on making all these other superhero movies. Yeah. Is going is making a superhero movie something that really that you want to do, or is it something that you have to write? Your, you know what I mean? Like I'm just curious what you're thinking about for something in the future and what is attractive to you. Well, I'm a. Uh, I'm a DC guy. I grew up on those. Uh, I used to draw comics myself. I used to, you know, as a kid, uh, it, it, you know, isolated rural community. Comics were kind of illicit. They weren't allowed in school. And, of course, uh, you know, I was really into them. And it, it was a DC world. Um, the, the, yeah, I don't, I don't have to write the screenplay. It really depends on story. I mean, for, it, I mean, they are basically... Greek and Roman mythology repurposed, and uh, so they've, in their own way, quite profound. And, and uh, so, it's something I, I would I would look at. I've got, you know, I've probably got more movies. Well, I definitely have more movies uh, in my head than I've got time to make. Uh, and and I do like mixing genres. Like one is a holiday from the other. You know. Yeah, I, I, I hope you're getting back behind the camera very soon. And again, um, so congratulations on this movie. I hope it does so well. Oh, thank you. Fantastic. Let me hit C.